Alright, Parashat Shoftim. Should be Leilu Nishmat, my father, Gedalia Morel Ben Matilda, and everybody else who needs it. It says in the Parasha, Ki it etzel ha milchama eloi vecha, veraita sus varechev am rav mimcha, lo tira mehem, ki Hashem elokecha imach amalcha meeretz mitzrayim. If you go to a war on your enemy, you saw a horse and chariot and a lot of key who's here and a lot of troops much greater than you. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid, because Hashem is with you. He who brought you out from Mitzrayim, and that pasuk. It's been darshan in many, many different, uh, many different ways, many different aspects. If you look at the pshat of the pasuk, the simple way to look at the pasuk, that's just as the translation is, you know, it talks about going to a war against the enemies of Am Israel, and so on and so forth. And Hakadosh Baruch Hu promises us, don't be afraid of them. Why? Since Hashem is with you, so you have nothing to be afraid of. But if we're going to darshan that pasuk on what this uh, the rem is, and the same thing as it starts next week's parasha, Kitetzela Milchama, it says, Kitetzela Milchama Eloivecha, if you're going to see war on your enemies, that war deals with how man faces and deals his Yetzerara. Yetzerara <coughs> needs to. <coughs> Excuse me, it needs to be quite explained what the Yetzer Ara is. Uh, usually, how people translate the Yetzer Ara? Evil inclination. Evil inclination. I mean, I don't know, the word evil always sounds a little bit, sounds a little bit Christian to me, but uh, evil inclination. But let's look at the, at a, at a, at a different way. What's the Yetzer from? What's the, what's the Shoresh of? Yud Tzadik Resh, what else has the same yet, the same show, the same root? To form, to set, hara, bad. In other words, yet hara could be the habits or the bad habits in which you are forming yourself. In other words, what I'm trying to tell you, it is a choice that you make to do this over that, as we spoke about it last week, about uh, free choice. It's the choice that I make. I went to this way or I went to that way. Ultimately, it was my choice. And those choices that I made throughout my life are the way or the methods in which I form myself. So the bad formation in which you displaced upon yourself. I don't think you guys like to hear that. Because you like to hear the Yetzerara is this magical force that you create. I mean, it sounds to me like you have a, a, a suffer from schizophrenia or maybe a split personality disorder. This Yetzerara, it tells me the voice is in my head. Oh, it's not me, it's the Yetzerara. Oh, really? Hey, you could have fooled me. It's you and nobody else but you. You made those decisions. It's you. Where's the Rebbe? Upstate. What is he doing upstairs? Upstate. Ah, upstate? Yeah. What is he doing upstate? I don't know. I'm in the middle of the middle of the house. Okay. Okay. Maybe, yeah. Well, at least you didn't go to the oil hell. <laughs> anyway, so it talks about how, how do we deal with this. Now, those urges, that yetzer, which is a leading force in which a person lives his life. You live your life like that. That's how the path in which you take your life. Uh, yetzer is the koach, the shoresh of Yetzirah, formation, binia, building. The Yetzer is there for a reason. It's there for a reason. I mean, let's put it this way. If I take a, a hot pepper, 
I mean, if you take a bite out of the hot pepper, it burns you. But it's there for a reason, to put a little bit in the food, brings about the flavor, it's a little tangy, it's good, and so on and so forth. So, you need this, or you put a drop of sugar even in, in food in order to bring the flavors out. Or salt, you put too much, that's already bad. So the Yetzer is there for a reason, that's, that's, that's Yetzer Mishum Yetziratiyut, creativity. The Yetzer helps me to create. Yetzira is not only formation, Yetzira is also a composition of sort. For example, Yetzira Tomanut, a composition of art, it could be music, could be painting, and so on and so forth. So if I would not have that, I would not have that Yetzer. So that's where it's coming from. In its root, there is some good essence to it if you just know how to root it. That's why you cannot kill your Yetzer. If you kill your Yetzer, you in a way kill your creativity. So it's, it's a good thing that we have this, that. That's the root of it. It's good. It's fine. And, and that is the ability of man with his koach, his, his force, his ability to choose and to direct that raw energy of what we call the Yetzer into something positive. You don't let it overwhelm you. You control it. You set boundaries. Right? Uh, that could, by doing so, it could make you want to have aspiration to grow, to develop, and that comes from the Yetzer. That comes from there too. Everything has two sides. Every coin has two sides. So it's a very deep concept because we were approaching that many times not from a pure Jewish point of view. We refer to the Yetzer Hara many times as Christianity refers to Satan and the devil, and you know. We're not Jay witnesses or some evangelics, you know. We understand that everything is a choice that we make. And it's all us. We don't want to do it because we like to always blame everybody. Instead of taking responsibility, we like to do the blame game. We like to blame, we never take responsibility. So, a person can also take this power of creativity in him into a negative trend, into chisaron, lacking, missing, into absence, instead of having, to less. Therefore, the Yetzer is always on two paths, and you are the one who will take the Yetzer and make it either Yetzer Tov or make it Yetzer Ra. If I don't have that Yetzer, I need to sneeze. <coughs> Thank you. If I don't have, I have major allergies. I think I got them from you. No, I'm just kidding. If I don't have that Yetzer, I would not be able to desire to do even good things. I'll be like a beast. You know? So, but how do I choose that ability to choose? That's already my choice. Sounds like a oxymoron, but yes, that's, that's about it. Uh, man is a very complicated creation and is combined from two opposing forces, that, or at least they seem opposing forces. Plus and minus, plus and minus. Just like electricity, you need the plus and the minus in order to create a current. If you don't have plus, you don't have a minus, you have, there's nothing there. You need both of them. And that is raw energy. Now, the same thing, hey, and the same thing as, as electricity. You could create either good things or bad things. So in one hand, that connection between the body, which is physical, to the neshama that is spiritual, or the, what we call the chelek eloah mimal, right? The, the, the neshama of the person. Uh, it seems like a tremendous contradiction uh, 
and it's impossible almost to live one another and we therefore need to create the environment to make this possible uh, to operate otherwise we can't operate there's too many too many conflicts it would never go anywhere so the Rama, which is very interesting the Rama says the, the following it says and this is a tremendous it's a tremendous chidush it says kol basar umafli la'asot when we make a bracha asher yatsar yatsar you see milshon yatsar from the beginning of men we had this ability how kol basar umafli la'asot so the Rama says that there is a divine miracle pele atzum umadhim in the connection of those two forces that seems to be opposing one another, that connection brings an unbelievable amount of power and energy that only man has. That's what mankind is the ruler on this earth. Because of that, I'm just going to tell you something. Just think about it also in terms of the opposing forces in our nations. If we will be able to take everything together, we'll be able to create a tremendous tidal wave. But once we want to make everybody the same, and everybody thinks the same, and everybody operates the same, and everybody looks the same, and dresses the same, we reaching a steel movement there's not there's no movement there it's it's stops right so need to think about that so if you and, and and that is that is the uniqueness of mankind with his ability to think to create and to choose man is the only creature that has an ambition I've never seen the chimpanzee that wants to, to rule. Uh, I mean, we're not talking about Mowgli in the Jungle Book, right? I want to be a man, man cub, right? King Louis. King Louis. Only man wants that. To conquer the heavens. To fly to the moon. That ambition. So therefore, when a person does not have any ambition... Well, it's a sign of a spiritual death. Well, I don't want to do anything. I want to sit down in bed and just cover myself up. There's something wrong with that. I mean, the person is, is, is suffering. I mean, that's a very unnatural state for a human. You want to become better in anything you do. Even if it's bad, you want to become the best at doing bad. It's interesting. So that's what makes us very unique. So if you look at the life of a man, of a human, we find that it's very, very easy for a person to connect himself. As I said to you guys, some of you guys earlier upstairs, I said it's easier for us to connect to the more simple aspects of our life into most simple, non-creative parts that are more directed towards materialism, to material, to the chomer, and even to procrastination, laziness, and heaviness. What did it tell us? Who says it to us? No? This is your right? <laughs> no, he didn't say Shev Batzel. Shlomo, very good. Very good. He said, you re- I, I told you already, you know Tanakh, but I, no substitute for that. You know in which Sefer did Shlomo said that? <laughs> Well, you say, no? well, you're guessing or you know? Uh, no. Okay, you don't know. Okay, remember what I told you? Yeah. Uh huh. But you're good. I, 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 that's very good. That's very good. I, I read it in the book. Look how the Malad, the Malad, the ant is always busy, always doing something. Always, what is she always in the ant in? Tuvia, no? Asiya, always doing, always busy. So he tells us, read darkeya vechakem and become wise by looking at it. Look at this. Have you don't need to see a solar eclipse? 
You can look at an ant and become wise. Okay? So, when, when a person does it, it's easier for us. We want to, I mean, that's, by the way, it's a tremendous chisaron, deficiency in men, because, of course, that's what governments do. They create all these entitlement programs to apply, to direct this to the laziness of a person that he doesn't have to do anything. Government will take care of me. I don't have to work. I don't have to worry about my apartment. I don't have to worry about my health care. That's it. And you see how bad it is. Ultimately, it's bad. Because that creates a dependency. And that dependency, in the end, leads to destruction. What we expect, so-called, for a person is to, to have an ambition, to want, to connect to his upper part, right? Which is the sechel, the brain, the intellect, the tvuna, the wisdom inside of him, to create, to form, to build, to forces inside of him are more complete. Chomer is always missing something. And that's why we don't want in our time, we don't want people to think. We want people to follow. We don't want people to become wiser, smarter. And I'm it, it, it's mind-boggling to me that young guys like you don't come to life, don't approach life with hunger to, for knowledge, to learn, to know about everything. You should be hungry to learn. You don't want this. All you want is to win the lottery or to hit to retirement. For crying out loud, you haven't lived yet. You only want to retire. It was worth it to bring you to this world, to spend all this money for college and diapers, so you could wait for retirement. That's a pathetic state of mind. And you know what we say about absolute? We spoke about it. Brings immorality. Laziness brings immorality. And we are a very lazy society, Rabotai. Lazy. We don't even want to toil and work hard, even us, among us, in the Torah. We want Yoshua to sit down, or Ari to sit down and read the Gemara. We like, uh, okay, I see you, Yofi. You need to work hard on it. I appreciate some people. And you could see that that effort eventually pays up. And all of a sudden, right? Right? Eitan? Right. Of course, right. There you say no. <laughs> but you understand what I'm saying to you? Where's your ambition? Where's your willingness? Nowhere. What is it you want to achieve? Retirement? It's a death sentence. And the Pasuk says, Ki In other words, a yetzer ara. And what happened? The raita sus. Sus, a horse. What does it mean? It shows a valuability, right? It's right there. That, that desire to materialism right away. Into, and materialism is something material is heavy. It weighs you down. Any material will lay you down. Yeah? You take material, you take cement with you, you go to the ocean, what happened? You fall down. So you can't lift yourself up. You can't think, Rabotai, let me ask you this. When was the last time you took a contemporary book of Jewish thought? I mean, they don't even write them anymore. What happened to all the Jewish thinkers? You know what happened? They stopped thinking. They stopped following. The learned, the learning of, of Musa or, 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 or books that are philosophical books. Or the Ramah Bichal, nobody touches that, you know, that, that philosophical books. We, we became so lazy, and that's why I said to you today, or yesterday, right down, when we were talking about Mashiach, it's laziness that you want it. You don't want to work. You want him to do the work for you. That's not going to happen. 
So a horse, right, represents represents that. The rechev, rechev. Well, now we have to know Hebrew for that, which is the mukavut in the man, mukavut, the complexity of of mankind that comes between the, the, to the balance between body and soul and, and, and the natural inclination of a man of us to go, to drop the soul to go to the body so the Pasuk tells us Lo don't be afraid of that, don't be afraid that you're going to fall into this materialistic trap that you are all so busy trapping yourself in a person who is who is concerned with that? Torah says, "Don't worry, lotira, lotira mehem. Don't be afraid from that." Ele barechem veele basusim. That's for the other people. But we connect ourselves with the Anachnu. In Shem Hashem, our 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 hope is b'Shem Hashem. So he says, don't be afraid. Why? Because the chelik ayon of the man is, is, is ruchniyut in him, is good side on him, which is what we call the haskala in yonah, which is, you know, thinking up higher thoughts. Our free choice lead us to spirituality, which eventually lead us to perfection. And from when this koach comes to the person, huh? From, very, from that very simple. Ki Hashem Elokecha Imach. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is with you. So if you don't know where you go, go to the Emuna, and you understand. And you look at people who really have Emuna, and they don't bother with it, you know, okay, so I have a small one-bedroom apartment with a, with a one table because I don't have a ladder of sofa, and oh, I don't care, Hashem is with me. I'm, I live in my, my books. I don't care about, about those things. So it's a very good indicator for you to know where you are standing. Look at what you're striving. Are you, are you content with what you have? Do you, do you realize that it's important or not important? Is it each and every one, don't, don't answer, of course. But each, it's for each and every one of you to have a very good, and especially now, uh, very close to Rosh Hashanah. You need to take an inventory of your, of your you need to take a, of, of your GPS, your spiritual GPS. Uh, what state of mind are you at? Where are you holding? It's a very, very, uh, I know it's a very tough concept that I'm trying to present to you. But, you know, too bad. Somebody's going to tell you that. What is it you desire? Desire materialism? Or you're not. Even if you're aware that you have this materialistic trend in you, say, how am I going to do it? Say, Hashem Elokai is in me. I'm, I'll connect myself to that. And that will help, gives me the power to overcome my materialistic urges. So I'm not saying not to have it but to have it under submission, under control. I control it. In order to control the, the material, to create a work of art, I need to dictate to it what to do. And as Chazal says, If it wasn't like Kadosh Baruch Hu, Yetzirah would have win you all the time. So therefore, what do we need Yetzirah? It says Yetzirah help us First of all, to be able to choose, right? And because of that, to build different steps of our lives uh, at different levels. And as much as, uh, as long as our, 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 we keep on choosing, and therefore our, uh, what we choose becomes more spiritually oriented, we're going to elevate ourselves one step at a time, higher and higher and higher to a spiritual perfection. And by doing so, we're going to elevate ourselves. We're going to reach a very high level, which is a very close level in proximity to our relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And Chazal tells us, Barati lecha Yetzerara, Barati lecha Torah Tavlin. The spice for the Yetzerara that makes it under control is Rabotai, the Torah. Learning Torah. You're not going to be able to get your Yetzerara to work for you unless you're going to learn Torah. I don't care what you say. That 
that's a fact. And that is uh, that is that is very simple. That is very simple. You have to learn Torah. If people say to me, "I don't need to learn Torah. I don't need to keep Shabbat. I, don't, I just need to be good," you that you, you don't know what you say. You can be good because your definition of good will keep on changing based on your environment, on your, on, your, on, your, on your society. If you want to do good, you have to keep Torah. You have to keep the mitzvot. You have to learn all the time. I mean, and and, and that's, that's the way it is. And we cannot deny the fact of, of, uh, of, uh, of deterrence factor in our lives. I mean, for example, if there is a, if you do something bad, there's a punishment, right? Like uh, in, uh, during the Cold War, uh, the deterrence factor, or the theory was that if I have more weapons than you, more nuclear weapons than you, than Russia, United States more than Russia, so Russia will think twice before it's going to because bombard because we're going to, right? So, and uh, Chazal said already in Masechet Avot, in Pirkei Avot, in Perek Gimel, il male mora'a shel malchut, ish et achiv chayim bala'o. If it wasn't for the fear of the, of the deterrence factor, the fear factor, you know, that, that the authorities give us, we will eat each other up, right? But if you think that by having this, this, uh, deterrence factor, the, the punishment, that's enough, you're wrong. And that's why we need to learn Torah. If you think it's just a punishment, you're afraid of punishment, you're wrong. So therefore, for people who became Baalei Tshuva just because they are afraid they're going to be boiled in hell, rawr, you know? They listen to a lecture of Rabbi Maharavi, Rabbi Tzfoni, Rabbi Dromi, right? And all about his hell and burn and that's very nice, but that's not enough because that goes after a while. It goes wash does under a while. Why? Because it says barati yetzara barati lo Torah. Now, Rav Cook says in his in his Egod, is the essence of chinuch is to prepare men to his correct form. That the central point. The focal point of your life, and I'm quoting, is to do la asot tov yashar, to do the right and, and, and honest thing. If you don't have education, you are never going to be able to do that. For example, in our society that there is hate, is only because we don't educate our children not to hate. And people make a political fortune out of that. And you're talking to me about the Middle East? It's never going to be peace there. And, and, and leave what the Torah said, just for the very reason, you know. <laughs> Look at the schools of the Palestinians. They, they teach you to hate the Jews from the age zero. So they're never going to be peace there. They're never going to be a correct society if the education system stinks and it reeks. You need to learn. And, and the, the Rav Kook says, since the time of Avraham Avinu that came out to the world and stole this truth, he kira knesset Israel. Since the time of Abraham Avinu, Knesset Israel, Am Israel, realized that's the best way to prepare men and the most secure way to increase his honesty, your internal honesty and the kindness of mankind. Therefore, we need to place a focal point or the focal point of a Jewish life should be based on Jewish education, Limuda Torah, Limuda Halacha, and Machshava. 
Jewish thought, Jewish outlook, not to be afraid to ask questions, not to be afraid to work hard to find the answers. So if we don't allow people to ask questions and we don't engage in machshava, we are taking a very bad chance that we are going to um, <coughs> not score appropriately with our, with our children. We're not going to educate them appropriately. We need to read the parts of the Rambam that most people don't read. We should read the Moreh Nevuchim. We should read Halachot De'ot to the Rambam. We should read Halachot Shuvah to the Rambam. We should approach the, the Mesilat Yesharim different than we, that we do. It's not all about guilt and about pain. It's about also applying positive and teaching you why, is, why it's not worth it, as the Mesilat Yesharim says. And that's why, by the way, Jews, the education by Jews is, is so great. That's why, in, in, especially in New York, you know, at a certain point, a great number of teachers were always Jews. It's, it's, it's in our blood. Abraham Avinu was the first major teacher. And, you know, and, 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 and this will prepare men. That's your boot camp that will prepare men to the battles of, of, of life. And uh, without this, you're going to lose. Look at our education system. Look at any country and look at the education system. Look at Japan, look at Korea. Why are there such superpowers? Because the education system. And I'm not even talking just about morals. I'm talking about education system, period. Our education system sucks. It stinks. It's bad. Most of the, not all, but most of the teachers that are out there became teachers because they had nothing better to do. Not because they like it. And it shows. So, and also, of course, you know, your environment, your, your social environment, your social norms would influence your, the functioning of a person. A society that does not have a botai red lines, boundaries. And that's why we said boundaries, that there are, and that's why I said it upstairs, right? When I have boundaries, when I know what left and what right, I can continue forward. But if I don't know what left and what right, I need to go in zigzag to see, oh, oh, I'm getting close here. And then, okay, so I'm going to go here. And then I'm going to go to the other side to see exactly where, where is the, the, you know, the, the limit on the other side. So all I'm going to be doing is like this instead of just going straight if I know where my boundaries are. So a society that doesn't have any red lines, any boundaries, is a very, very dangerous society. A society that allows... Uh, 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 there is a very lenient society, you know, live and let live kind of a society. If you live in such a society, don't be surprised if it's going to fail. And the fail is going to be, first of all, educational failure. So why do we, another reason why we fail in the education is because we are very, very lenient As Chazal tells us in Masechet Brachot Daf Lamed Bed Amud Aleph, Mashal Adam Echad Shaya Lo Ben. It's a story about a man who had a son. He chitzo v'sako v'echilo v'eshkau. He washed them. He bathed them. He put nice, you know, clothing and cologne on him. He fed him. V'talalo kisal tzavaro, and he gave him a wallet full of dollars. Veheshivo al petach zonot. And he said to him, he said, please sit down next to a bordello. You know what a bordello is? You know what it is? A whorehouse. So he says, the Gemara says, Maya sea ben velo yechta. What do you want from the kid? You put him there. You clean them all up, you give him money, and you put him there. You expect them not to sin? 
And what, and what, what place did you leave your son? So a, a society that brainwashed its children with pornography all over. Things that you can't even imagine. And we, we, we're okay with this. All the time. A society that continuously gives us severe crime movies, and it's very in your face. Murder. Killing. What? You don't think it's going to have an effect on you? It's not going to have an effect on the children? <coughs> if there is such a society, don't you going to think that there may be because of that there are going to be a lot of cases of rape and murder and immorality? You're brainwashing your people. And the only reason why you do so is for so they would not have control, so you can continue controlling them. But that's what you do. We became a very violent society. And it's because, because of movies. Because of things we're allowed to say or to see. Then they have these movies, and you call them Mayur Vazbani in English. Yeah. Fast and Furious. Every time they have a Fast and Furious, there's a wave of like, you know, young guys driving little dinky little cars with the uh, engines and wheels that go like this, and they think. But you think they're in the movies. They think they're in the movies. They think they're in the movies. And uh, they had the grand auto theft, and everybody steals cars. And I mean, it's just unbelievable. I'm surprised nobody wants to be a Pokemon. <laughs> you know the influence of those uh, Japanese movies? Those, um, uh, anime, anime mag magna, manga, whatever you call this. I mean, there's no end to it. You live in a fantasy world. But you can only live in a fantasy world for so long. At the end, it hits you in the face. And what is it you give to your kids? Even less. Because... We give to our kids whatever our parents gave us, but we don't choose to, to recharge our batteries. We keep on depleting the batteries. At the end, we're going to give them empty batteries. They're not going to be able to go anywhere. What more is we going to give to our kids? You know, your grandparents told you about they, they fought this one, and they fought that one, and they build, and they did. And what are you going to tell them? You watch, you watch anime. It's a mental anima. So how, as, as long as society is going to avoid the reason of the chet, of the sin, of the bad, and society is going to concentrate in only impunitive measures and the way to deter and to, and to penalize, like we do today. <coughs> Why comes Mayor De Lausio, that is the, you know, um, the, the mayor, right? Oh, today you sneeze in the city, you get a ticket. <coughs> if, we, if this, this cholera is going gonna, is gonna to be elected for another day, I think we're going to be going like five miles an hour in reverse. <laughs> and it's ridiculous because everything is punitive. You don't, people litter, and I, and I see it, people litter like never before. 20 years ago, people didn't throw so much garbage in the streets. And it's all over. Why? Because the education sucks. Because you're only concentrating on penalizing. You don't give people a reason why to do so. And so is to us. Don't think that as religious people, we live in a vacuum. It's a reflection of society also on us. Is there a reason for, for a from guy to run a stoplight? Guys, go to the Five Towns, go to Brooklyn. You know, every religious lady doesn't stop in a stoplight. She just cruises by. They push. They drive like lunatics. You're a from person. Well, why are you driving like this? Where's your Derek Harris? 
Where's your respect for what you represent? Why, why are you driving like this? I'm oh, going to Israel to, you know, when I had to bury my dad, you know, that was crazy. And they, they drive like Mishugaim over there. My sister says to me, she said, you know, why do you have to be such a tzaddik? I said, well, what are you talking about? She said, the speed limit was, uh, let's say, for example, I don't know, uh, uh, I don't know 40, 40 miles an hour, let's say 40 kilometers an hour. So why are you going 35? I said, well, I don't understand. Well, what do you want me to do? I said, go, go, speed up, go 50. I said, no, I'm not going to. It's not always about, oh, I'm right. To do lifni mishurat adin. But where am I going? I mean, there's a red light. There's a red light. So I'm going to come to the red light and then 80 miles an hour, I'll slam on the brakes. Oh, but I got to the red light. And I said, why? Because you don't think. Because you get used to it. You want to see what I'm talking about? Let's see what it is. Look at what, what society we're in. You go on the lane, the other guy goes on the lane. Adjust your speed to the other guy's speed. You'll see that he'll try to pass you. You haven't done the thing. You just came to him like this, side by side. He will try to go like this. Even better, just put your blinker. If they're not going fast, you just put your blinker, they'll go fast automatically. Yeah, automatically, you're right. <laughs> yes. Why? Oh, what's the big deal? The guy wants to go. Let him, let him, let him merge. Let him merge. Let him get in. What's the big deal? You should see, I let people in Israel actually cross the street. I let, oh, do you want to go? Look. People look at me like I fell from the moon. It's like, look. the guy, I said, go, go in with your car, go. He looks at me like, are you okay? <laughs> What's the big deal? It's a matter of education. Now, I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you the following. So therefore, a society, especially our society, a Jewish society, must take upon itself in his hand and not to allow people who are rotfei betza, who are only interested in money and, and immoral people to control it. We have to do whatever we can to return to us back, to our society, our moral duties. And we need to understand that we are responsible for our destiny. Now the parasha says, Shoftim v'shotoim, Shotrim v'shoftim, titen lecha, to you. The parasha should have said, Shoftim v'shotoim, titnu lachem. Because upon entering the land, I understand that's the, how to run a country, right? You have to go law and order and, 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 and this authority and that authority and, and, you know. But this is not just about the state, it's about you yourself. You, titen lecha, you need to put within yourself the markers in which you're going to put your shoftim, those who are going to be able to determine to you what the halacha is, the shotrim, those who are in charge of executing the law, and those who are over there to enforce the law so you won't, won't, won't pass it. In other words, you need to set yourself your own boundaries. Not only what the law tells you, not only what the halakha tells you, not only to be always right, to do what needs to be done. You need to do this to yourself. You need to ask yourself, because everybody is different. So you get arguments that turn on by red cars, and you get turned on by, I don't know, red something else. So you, you need to fit yourself to your shoftim and shotrim and to your yetzer and to your, and so on and so forth. You are, in other words, responsible for yourself. Stop blaming everybody else. Shoftim and shotrim titen lecha bechol she'arecha. What's the shar? Any way that in a shar is a gate, any way of, of interacting with the world outside uh, or with influences or whatever it is, or any kind of opening you have, you need to put a guard there who is going to control, who is going to be a filter to sift whatever only you want in. 
and it is your obligation, not the Torah, and you don't need Mashiach to be your, your policeman, and you don't need the Ray Kelly to be the... No, you are the sheriff. Shoftim v'shotrim titen lecha bechol sharecha. Not only that, you need to safeguard and to do extra. You need to watch more carefully, to speak more carefully, to hear more carefully, and so on and so forth. This week's parasha and next week's parasha especially deal with the way a man can deal and control himself in order, so-called, to enter the promised land. But if you don't put yourself... Your own, not only what the Torah tells you, but your own personal boundaries. You're going to be staying in the desert forever. <coughs> you're never going to reach the promised land. In other words, you're getting nowhere. It's the end of the year. It's another year gone. You need to make your case to HaKadosh Baruch Hu that it's worthwhile to give you another year, at least, if not more. This is how you're going to make the case. You're going to do things lifni mishuat adin. So if the minyan is at 8, you come at 5 to 8. So when the minyan starts, you already have talit and feeling on. It's not enough that you just learn Torah. You actually have to do chazara. You have to review it. And not only you review and you learn, you also have to teach. That's why Chachamim gave us those halachot. We have muktze and so on and so forth in order to help us to continue forward. Rabotai, don't forget Monday we have a CU Masechet or Masechet Gitin. After two and a half years, we actually finished that. So not only I expect you to come, also to bring a friend. And uh, let's try to do that. Let's help each other. And if you need help, don't be shy. Don't be shy. Don't be too humble. Ask from a friend, say, listen, I need help to put boundaries. I'm having a little bit of a problem with this. How could I do that? You're going to Israel. Those of you who go to Israel, be careful. Be careful. Be very careful when you go to Israel. Because over there, putting boundaries is more important than here. It's the holy land. It's Lopashut. So... You do that, and you'll be able to go forward, and not only you, but all of us should be able to do, to elevate ourselves and we should all have a Shabbat Shalom.